find the link tank uh, a lot easier to use than the masking tape because uh, I've discovered with the masking tape it does leave a residue. This one not so much. What I can do with this particular piece is I've got my paper at the top cut a little larger than the bottom and the sides so that when I get rid of these marks, all I do is ruler it, cut it uh, on the line and then make my paper the same size. In Santa Fe, my teacher, Seymour Chivas, always wore the red. And he would always take it off when he went into the classroom and bring it up on and for that reason, in order to honor him, I wore a beret when I was a student here. Uh, and then one year in Santa Fe, another artist had on a similar beret. And my wife asked him, where did you get that beret? And he said, oh, I got it over at the Hilton. There, were, there was a Russian woman over there that was influenced by the Northwest Coast art design. So she went over and she got me this beret, and it has a feather design on it. And then I've added turtles to it. <laughs> Another thing Seymour did was he usually had nice clothes on. So in printmaking, you make sure you have an apron or you have messy clothes on and you don't mind getting dirty or ink stained or whatever. So it was usually a longer apron than this one. But this one was free when I volunteered at FOIA. And then I like the uh, plate glass. I have clear glass and I have larger clear glass for larger works. And this size here is just about right. You have two different kinds of rollers. You have a hard roller. If you want to stay on the surface of your block, you have a soft roller. If you want to get down into some of the grooves and some of the um, areas of, say, your, your mahogany grand flag, because you'll get those little lines coming through there. And then you use this one. And depending on how heavy you roll the ink on, onto your block or uh, put it onto your roller. Then you have the sizes that fit into doing multiple colors if you have small areas in one block. This one is really new, never been used before. But once you start using your oil-based printing inks on your blocks, you can't use water-based printing inks on it because it won't adhere. Can you use one roller for different colors, or once you use it with one color, it has to... Well, you can use the same roller for several colors, but you better clean it first. <laughs> How do you clean it? Uh, there's two ways to clean it, and one of them, I think, leaves a uh, residue, but it's environmentally friendly. Vegetable. That's what you use with your cooking, oh. vegetable oil, okay. and because I I uh, haven't attended a class in the advances in printmaking. There are all kinds of new things going on out there that I probably need to take a class and learn some of the new techniques. 
put your vegetable oil in the container, and then also your um, paint thinners. You can use those. Sorry, right. it's a little uh, smellier, a little less environmentally friendly. Um, but if you like the smell of turpentine, <laughs> Then you kind of get used to it. If you're an oil painter and you use serpentine, just leave your brushes. How, how do you get equal distribution of the oil paint on the on the roller? I mean, do you like have a little plate and just put the little spot? Of, oh, you do it on the rack. Okay. Okay. That's what that's for. Okay. I'm okay. Not, I'm not an artist, so I didn't know. <laughs> that's what I had to ask. This is also uh, a single woodblock print. But in order to do all of these little dots, I used a drill. And I just drilled and drilled and drilled. And that's called Little Chief. And that's taken from a photograph. Because when I first started doing my artwork, I would use photographs, whether they were Curtis photographs or <coughs> photographs from my family or photographs in books that I happened to run across. And the danger about the Curtis photographs is that you'll see the same dress on different tribes. You know. So he would mix uh, his regalia. Plate oil is just a, a, it's a thinner for your your inks or your paints. Made from? I think it's a little bit of turpentine, maybe linseed oil. you're rolling your ink out, you can pick up the little imperfections there and move them out of the way. But you want to kind of get a smooth consistency uh, and then you come back in.
and talked about using the same roller. If you mixture ink, it's okay to do it on the mixture. You're just trying to spread that out so you get a really consistent or, or uniform? Yes, a, a uniform so that you don't have globs of right. ink on your roll. Same thing you want to do when you ink your block. So then you can look that up to the light and see that you've got a nice read all over your Then you just roll it down until you fill it. The same consistency on your roller. Now you've got three colors on this block. Slide it in place. I used to have a really nice navy spoon that was just a lot of nice weight that I enjoyed and one time I went and did a demonstration and I think I left it behind. So I finally picked this one up uh, that I've also utilized a lot of other got a really soft uh, print paper, then you want to put a piece of uh, newsprint uh, over the top of it and then rub it because that will help you keep from tearing it. If you're really angry at someone, <laughs> If you haven't used your blocks in a while, and if you want to get uh, a little more color on that, you can always come back, repeat each of your areas. Because you haven't moved your paper. Blocks will dry out after a while. Do you have to clean the block after this process too? Um, you can wait for a little bit to clean the block. Don't wait too long though. Do you clean that with the mist and the roll as well? No, I clean it with the uh, paint thinner. Uh, like I said, uh, the vegetable oil will leave a little greasy residue. Your 
and they uh, they will both kind of uh, cause your brain to close up. Lock or the uh, register always comes into play because you're using it so that when you lay your paper down again, it will come back into the same area. Using friction, you want to not overheat your spoon or you'll get your finger. <laughs> I get ready to clean my block, especially, then I'll put the gloves on. That way I can soak the rag or whatever I'm using. is if you're doing multiple blocks or multiple colors, you always want to make sure that it's plenty of ink so that you don't run out. You know, how did I mix that? Yeah. You do to get it consistent. Some people will come up to me and they'll go, I'd like to see you paint. If you want to go to sleep, yes. <laughs> minutes. She said, well, I got things to do. I'll see you later. <laughs> When you do multiple runs of these different prints, do you mix up the colors or? 
Yeah, uh, yes. I have enough mixed paint that when I do the uh, blocks, usually it would, it would do uh, these colors one day, let mm -hmm. it dry and then come back, register my paper again and then do another block of colors so that it's not printed all at once okay. like I'm doing now. Would you ever do a series from the same blocks in a completely different color range? I have uh, one wood block print that I call Seasons Color, and in each of the blocks I varied the colors in it because what it depicted was a woman pulling back the curtain of night to reveal the landscape. Which was a theme of mine for uh, not only some paintings but also uh, woodblock prints. And then with your leftover inks. If you want to do a monotype, then you come back in and you spread them out, and then you will go on to that, or you use a brush, pick out areas, and then more color. And then do a one of a kind piece of art. And I like monotypes because they are one of a kind. They're called monotypes, not just because you printed one, but because you're you're uh, sort of doing it all in, in one cycle. Right, or, in one cycle. Although with with my monotypes, what I've done in order to be consistent with my style of art, I'll take my paper, tape it down, and then do a back and forth masking, laying down my ink, removing the mask completely. Printing that area, coming back in, remasking another area, adding more in, so that it stays in a tighter image than if I just did it uh, all at once.
there a strategy that you're using to go from one pillar to another? feed a lot of feral cats because our neighbors who have the cats don't take care of them. But, uh, we lay out cat food at night. Uh, along comes the raccoons, along comes the possums. Mm -hmm. and, they all know you. <laughs> yeah, they do. We've got two of the fattest raccoons that come. <laughs> <laughs> they don't bother the cats, and the cats don't bother them. I said, well, as long as they're not fighting, they're going to get along. 